Hola, and welcome to another episode of One Line at a Time. If you missed the first two episodes, you can find them at SpanishDude.com slash lines. We're picking up where we left off last time. Eleanor, the main character, was just told by this dude Michael that she was dead and that she was in the good place, not the bad place. From there, Michael took Eleanor for a walk and explained how the good place works. He told her the good place is divided into neighborhoods of exactly 322 people that have been perfectly selected to blend together into a blissful harmonic balance and each neighborhood is different, every detail having been uniquely calibrated for its residents. Michael then told Eleanor to grab a seat because the movie was about to start. The movie was basically Michael telling everybody in the neighborhood all at once more about how the good place works. And his first big announcement was, one of the other people in your neighborhood is your actual soulmate and you will spend eternity together. In Spanish, the subtitlers translated that as, uno de los de su vecindario es su alma gemela y pasarán la eternidad juntos. The first thing I want to talk about is, they translated neighborhood as vecindario. I don't recall seeing or hearing the word el vecindario used for neighborhood in my travels. In my experience, the most common way to say neighborhood is el barrio. Though I recall hearing la colonia for neighborhood in certain places too. La colonia is the Spanish version of the English word colony. But it doesn't surprise me that a word like el vecindario can be used for neighborhood because el vecino is how you say neighbor. El vecino or la vecina. Vecino and Vecina can also serve as adjectives, and when they do, they mean near, nearby, anything like that, which is what a neighborhood is. It's all the places that are nearby. The next little thing is, Michael said, in your neighborhood, but they translated that as, from your neighborhood. They use the preposition de instead of the preposition en. That's the thing with prepositions. Sometimes, in some contexts, more than one preposition works, and the difference in meaning between the two is so small, it's irrelevant. Somebody in your neighborhood is your soulmate, somebody from your neighborhood is your soulmate, in this context, that's the same thing. Then, big picture, the Spanish translation is way shorter than the original English sentence. That's mainly because in English, Michael said the other people, but in Spanish, it's just los. The Spanish translation doesn't include the word people or the word other. What's going on is, the word los is serving as a pronoun here. Uno de los de su vecindario basically means one of those in your neighborhood. So, the pronoun los means those and represents the other people in Eleanor's neighborhood. This is basically short for uno de los vecinos de su vecindario, or whatever. It's just easier and faster to say uno de los de su vecindario than it is to say uno de los vecinos de su vecindario. And actually, that's really short for un vecino de los vecinos de su vecindario. In the original Spanish translation, uno is a pronoun too. It represents one neighbor. Then the pronoun los represents all the other people in the neighborhood. God bless pronouns. Moving on to the second part of the sentence now, in English, when we say soulmate, they say la alma gemela. La alma means soul, spirit, or anything like that, though spirit is commonly translated as el espíritu. Then gemela is often a noun, la gemela, that means twin. But in this sentence, gemela is being used as an adjective and still means twin. La alma gemela means twin soul or twin spirit, which is the same basic idea as matching soul or matching spirit, which is the same basic idea as soulmate. We do the same thing in English with the word twin. It can be a noun or it can be an adjective. Jimmy and Kimmy are twins. Twins is a noun here. Kimmy is Jimmy's twin sister. What kind of sister is Kimmy? Kimmy is Jimmy's twin sister. Twin is an adjective. In Spanish, twin brother would be el hermano gemelo and twin sister would be la hermana gemela. Now there is another way to say soulmate, la media naranja. That's like saying the half orange, the orange half, or half an orange. La media naranja can also be used for perfect match, better half, anything like that. This reminds me of those necklaces girls used to wear in school with the heart charms, where two BFFs would each take half the heart with them. Do kids still do that? Am I going to get in trouble for implying that only girls do that? Please don't complain to YouTube about me. I say crisscross applesauce now instead of Indian style. Moving on to the third and final part now, they translated you will spend, that's the plural you, as pasarán, which more literally means you will pass. In English, when we say spend, as in to spend time, they often use the verb pasar, to pass. We do that too just not as much as they do. We could say, they're gonna spend the years together, or they're gonna pass the years together. We'd say that, right? For the record, when we're talking about spending money, to spend is gastar. Then, pasarán is a future tense conjugation. Throughout this sentence, Michael is speaking formally. First, he says, su vecindario and su alma. Su is a third person possessive adjective. Then here, pasarán is the future tense plural third person conjugation of pasar. I haven't made any videos about the future 
future tense yet, but in my opinion, the future tense and the conditional tense are the easiest tenses, because there are relatively few irregular patterns to memorize, and because, instead of removing the original ending and adding a new one, in the future tense, for the regulars at least, we just have to add a new ending. That makes it much easier to recognize from which verb future tense conjugations come, because most future tense conjugations contain the original verb within them. Pasaran is a future tense conjugation of pasar, and within pasaran is the word pasar. Then the word juntos here at the end is serving as an adverb. We know juntos is an adverb, telling us more about the verb pasaran, because it tells us how they're going to pass eternity. They're going to pass it together, not separately or quickly, but together. We can move juntos wherever we want, basically. Juntos pasaran la eternidad. Pasaran juntos la eternidad. Or the way they have it, pasaran la eternidad juntos. Okay, last thing. This is another example where they use an article in Spanish, but we don't use an article in English. In English, Michael just said eternity, but in the Spanish translation, they said la eternidad. You'll really understand the lengthy explanation I'm about to give better if you've seen the most recent video I made about adjectives in the How English Works series. Link is below or in the first comment. In that video, I showed you that a, an, and the all mean one. A and an, indefinite articles, mean any one, then the, a definite article, means a specific one. A guy refers to any one guy. The guy refers to one specific guy. There's more to it than that, of course, but that's the basic idea. And for the sake of conversation, let's call a guy a general noun and the guy a specific noun. I don't love that terminology, but it'll work for now. In English, when we're talking about general nouns, we don't always say a or an. Like with the word time, they will spend time together. They will spend the time together. The first sentence is talking about a general period of time. Time is a general noun. And the second sentence is talking about a specific period of time. The time is a specific noun. Even though in the first sentence the speaker didn't say a. Now there are contexts in which we would say a time. But right now we're talking about this context. With general nouns we don't always say a or an. They will spend the morning together. They will spend the afternoon together. They will spend the night together. In this context, we say the before morning, afternoon, and night because they're specific parts of the day. Morning is the first part of the day, afternoon is the second part of the day, and night is the third part of the day. We do the same thing with the words past, present, and future. They spent the past together. They are spending the present together. They will spend the future together. In this context, past, present, and future are specific periods of time. They're specific nouns. The past is every moment up until now. The present is this moment only, and the future is every moment after this moment. Without getting all philosophical, that's the gist. The good news is, so far, everything I've shown you matches what they say in Spanish. They will spend the morning together. Pasarán la mañana juntos. They will spend the afternoon together. Pasarán la tarde juntos. They will spend the night together. Pasarán la noche juntos. Then, they spent the past together. Pasaron el pasado juntos. They are spending the present together. Pasan el presente juntos. They will spend the future together. Pasarán el futuro juntos. Yeah? You with me? But then there's this. They spent yesterday together. They are spending today together. They will spend tomorrow together. When we use the words yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we don't say the. We don't say the yesterday, the today, or the tomorrow. Even though yesterday means the day before today, today means the current day, and tomorrow means the day after today. The day before today, the current day, the day after today, those sure seem like specific days to me. They seem like specific nouns, yet we don't say the. But maybe there's another way to look at this. In reality, in real life, when we say they will spend tomorrow together, we don't really mean that they'll start spending time together at 12.01 a.m. when tomorrow technically starts, and that they'll stop spending time together at 11.59 p.m. when tomorrow technically ends. In this context, tomorrow really means a period of time tomorrow, a general noun. We don't know the starting point, we don't know the ending point, we just know sometime tomorrow. Same with yesterday and today. In this context, we're talking about a period of time yesterday and a period of time today. General nouns. Luckily, what they say in Spanish still matches what we say in English. They spent yesterday together. Pasaron ayer juntos. They're spending today together. Pasan hoy juntos. They will spend tomorrow together. Pasaran mañana juntos. We don't say the, they don't say el or la. 
The point is, in reality, in real life, there's often a way to look at a noun as a general noun or as a specific noun, even in the same context. Let's say we're sitting in the park when I see a male human being sitting on a bench picking his nose, and there's nobody else sitting on the bench. That's reality. That's fixed. There's no changing that. I could say to you, a guy on the bench just picked his nose, or in that same situation, I could say to you, the guy on the bench just picked his nose. Do you see how we have the option of framing this male human being as a guy, a general noun, or the guy, a specific noun? And either way, it describes the same reality exactly, kind of like we were able to look at the words yesterday, today, and tomorrow two different ways, as general nouns and as specific nouns. Now eternity, finally. This is where English and Spanish don't match. They will spend eternity together. Pasarán la eternidad juntos. We don't say the, they do say la. Why? The truth is, I'm not 100% sure, but what I do know is, in English, we treat eternity like we treat yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We don't say the. They spent yesterday together. They are spending today together. They will spend tomorrow together. They will spend eternity together. But in Spanish, they treat eternidad like they treat mañana, tarde, and noche. They do say la. Pasaron la mañana juntos. Pasan la tarde juntos. Pasarán la noche juntos. Pasarán la eternidad juntos. And really, a better comparison is they treat eternidad how they treat pasado, presente, and futuro. Pasaron el pasado juntos. Pasan el presente juntos. Pasarán el futuro juntos. Pasarán la eternidad juntos. It seems weird to us that they say la eternidad because we just say eternity. But in another way, it's kind of weird that we say the future, but we don't say the eternity. What's the difference between the future and eternity? Well, maybe nothing, but maybe something. I think the concept of the future is pretty clear. It's the period of time from the moment after this moment until infinity. But eternity? When does eternity start? Is eternity like the future? It starts the moment after this moment until infinity? Or does eternity start the moment somebody dies? In this case, the moment the second person dies. Then they spend eternity together. Again, I'm I'm not trying to get all philosophical here, I'm just saying we can look at eternity as a specific period of time, equal to the future essentially, we can look at eternity as a specific noun, but we can also look at eternity as some unspecified period of time, starting upon the death of somebody and continuing until infinity. We can look at eternity as a general noun. When I first see stuff like this, when I first realize what's going on in a sentence, I sometimes feel like I'm cheating or being intellectually dishonest somehow, like we always find what we're looking for kind of thing a sort of desperation almost, but when I looked up the definition of eternity, which I should have done a lot earlier, I became more confident. First, it says uncountable, existence without end. Then it says countable, a period of time which extends infinitely far into the future. Then down here, the remainder of time that elapses after death. Yeah, I think we're looking at this right. There are often, if not usually or always, two ways to look at a noun, as a general noun and as a specific noun. A guy on the bench is picking his nose, the guy guy on the bench is picking his nose. Two different sentences describing exactly the same situation in reality. Then in English, in this context at least, we treat eternity like a general noun, which is why Michael said, you will spend eternity together. No the. But in Spanish, they treat eternidad as a specific noun, which is why the translators went with pasarán la eternidad juntos. None of this really helps us that much when we're speaking Spanish. We still have to memorize and get used to when they say el or la and when they don't. But this helps us quite a bit when we're studying Spanish, reading Spanish, or looking at subtitles or song lyrics and are confused. This is the kind of thing we get stuck on that drives us absolutely crazy. When there's a mismatch between English and Spanish in this way, most of the time it's because the two languages are treating the noun differently in that context. It's all sentence specific and context specific. The reality of the situation matters, but which words are used and how they're used together also matters. What can I tell you? Language is weird. If any of that just confused you, don't worry. It confused me too. The more examples you see of this, the better you'll feel what I'm talking about. And as this series rolls on, we're bound to keep encountering this. So make sure you don't miss an episode of One Line at a Time. And don't miss the Name Your Price special I'm running on the Lifetime membership either. Until none of us are stuck in our houses anymore, you can become a Lifetime member for whatever price you want. You name the price. When you're a Lifetime member, you get access to all my premium courses, including Logical Spanish. Once you understand what I talk about in Logical Spanish, you'll be able to understand what I talk about in these videos a lot better. And now with the Name Your Price special, everybody can be a lifetime member and get access to Logical Spanish. If you can't swing the $5 minimum, please email me and I'll set up an account for you for free. Okay, until next time, hasta luego.